This is a disclaimer. You're welcome. So I've stated before that I think the first three seasons of Spongebob are some of the best first three seasons of any show ever. I think they are phenomenal seasons, and I still find myself watching most of these episodes a decade and a half later. Jeez, it's really been that long? Now, I said in my top 10 best pre-movie Spongebob's list that I didn't think that the current Spongebob's held a candle to these seasons. And many people thought that was a shot at post-movie Spongebob, but it wasn't. It was very high praise for how good these first three seasons are. But with that said, it does have a few duds. And while these duds may not be as bad as some duds I previously mentioned, they do need to be talked about. Now, I don't hate all the episodes that will be on this list. In fact, the first two episodes on this list are basically just mediocre episodes and a sea of phenomenal ones. So they're not bad, they're just not good by comparison. I've already talked about I'm What's Stupid, so I'm omitting that one from this list, as well as any pre-movie special episodes. So let's continue the month of cynical top fives with the top five episodes I consider the worst of pre-movie Spongebob. Number five. Grandma's Kisses. I feel like I should state this right now. If you guys like any of these episodes, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to persuade any of you to hate these. This is just my own personal opinion. Now with that said, I don't completely hate this episode. I just find it pretty bland and a bit mean-spirited. This episode is about Spongebob's grandma kissing him at work and everyone making fun of him for it. Why they're making fun of him for it, I honestly don't know. It seems very cold and unneeded to me. And it almost gives off this impression that none of these people have family members that they're close with. There's nothing wrong with getting kisses from your grandma. No, especially if you're a big baby who wears diapers. See, to me, this is like saying that being kissed by your grandma is public humiliation, and I just never understood that because I never got made fun of for stuff like that. Hell, I'm an adult and I'd still kiss my grandma in public. Grandma Gem Reviews is one of the nicest disembodied crystals you'd ever meet. And she makes great cookies. After this, Patrick convinces Spongebob to be more adult and even tries to be adult with him. But Patrick instantly turns his back on the idea and basically steals Spongebob's grandma. Big grown-up is boring. I love being a baby. It was your idea, you fat asshole! And since Spongebob wants to be treated as an adult, his grandma treats him like one and gives Patrick all the attention until Spongebob breaks down crying saying he wants to be treated like a baby. I want a sweater with love in the stitches. I want to wear tidies. Okay, you're going a bit overboard here, Spongebob. Well, his grandma tells him that he'll always be her little man, adult or baby, and Spongebob asks her not to mention this to the guys at work, who somehow found Spongebob's grandma's house and laugh as the episode ends. Basically, I just find this episode very boring, Patrick annoys the hell out of me, and Squidward and the Krusty Krab patrons are fucking assholes. The scenes where Spongebob's grandma's babying Patrick are very blah, and Spongebob's breakdown is just fucking weird to me. With all that said, though, it's clear there's an attempt at giving a sweet, heartwarming message. And honestly, if it ended with Spongebob and his grandma hugging, I'd probably give it a pass. I mean, her speech to Spongebob is kinda nice, and she does seem to have this warmth to her like a genuine grandma does. But no, they had to get that one extra kick in there, and it just totally killed it for me. Not a completely horrible episode, but certainly not a good one. Number 4. New Student Starfish. I'm sure there's a few of you who would want to see this higher on the list. But I'm only putting it at number 4, because the second half of the episode really isn't all that bad. The first half is about Spongebob having to go to school, and he invites Patrick to go with him because Patrick feels sad when Spongebob leaves. Spongebob gives Patrick a tour of the school, and introduces him to the class's biology project, Roger, who is a chicken egg. Okay, interesting choice. But once Patrick and Spongebob are in class, things get bad. Now at first, it seems pretty decent. Patrick introduces himself as 24, which is kind of funny. Oh great, another genius. But then Patrick starts getting Spongebob in trouble, and Spongebob ends up getting blamed for something Patrick does, resulting in him losing a good noodle star. And you see how hard it affects him. No, 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 no. 
And then SpongeBob gets sent to the back of the class where Patrick keeps bugging him and getting him in trouble. And apparently, Eagle Eye Puff doesn't notice. She can hear SpongeBob and Patrick whispering to each other in the front row, but she can't hear Patrick trying to get SpongeBob's attention when he's speaking loud enough for SpongeBob to hear him in the back of the class. SpongeBob scolds Patrick for what he did, and then the two of them try to get into a fight, resulting in both of them getting detention. May Neptune have mercy on your soul. Honestly, I feel horrible for SpongeBob. Once again, he's trying to do something nice for Patrick because Patrick wanted to spend time with him. And then Patrick basically destroys Spongebob's reputation and doesn't care what he did. Then the light keeping Roger alive goes out, so Spongebob and Patrick quickly patch things up and work together to save the egg. And this is what keeps it from getting any higher. This is actually an okay scene. Patrick, in a very rare moment, actually apologizes for the things he did. And I like seeing SpongeBob and Patrick work together here. We did it, Patrick! We saved Roger's life! Good job, boys! I saw the whole thing from behind my one-way chalkboard. Oh, you did, huh? Well, nice to know you preferred watching and hoping everything would turn out okay, rather than helping them save this apparently important egg. Hey! what I miss? You missed a mediocre episode of SpongeBob, Roger. Lucky you. Number 3 The Great Snail Race This episode is about Squidward getting an expensive snail for a snail race and Spongebob decides to enter Gary in because Squidward said something nasty about Gary? You can't enter Gary because Gary's a mutt! What makes you so sure Gary couldn't win that race? Papers! That's it? That's his only reason? And not only that, he fucking pushes Gary hardcore for this race. Come on, Gary, move it! Up, 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 down, down, down. Gary, move it, move it, move it, move it! Stroke, 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 stroke! Come on, Gary, we're gonna be late for the big race! That doesn't sound like SpongeBob to me. I mean, I can see him entering Gary in a race, sure, but... I don't picture him getting so worked up and acting like a fucking dictator to Gary just because of something Squidward said. That seems kind of unlike Spongebob, he usually just brushes this stuff off. Patrick ends up entering the race too, and... Okay, I won't lie, I think Patrick has some pretty funny scenes in this episode. Patrick, that's a rock. Yeah, thanks, I know. He's got nerves of steel. Hey, what are you standing on anyway? But the majority of this episode is basically Spongebob just horribly abusing Gary, and during the race, poor Gary basically explodes and you can just feel the pain he's going through. Oh, that's so fucking hard to watch! And this is of course what makes Spongebob realize that he pushed Gary too hard, causing him to break down and cry, and Squidward Snail to stop racing to go console Gary. And Patrick's Rock wins. My purebred, which cost me $1,700, lost to a rock. And also, what happens to SpongeBob at the end? <laughs> That's for yesterday, Square Pants! Okay, let's be honest. SpongeBob kind of deserved that. Now, this is by no means a bad ending. It's just not good enough to really make up for all the horrible mistreatment Gary went through throughout this whole episode. Honestly, this episode just went very overboard. SpongeBob had such a poor reason to act the way he was, and Gary's suffering is so unjust and unfair that I really just can't help but leave this episode without being totally satisfied. That's for yesterday, Square Pants! Number 2 Krabby Land. Is there anyone else that's a little surprised that this is from season 3 and not from season 6 or 7? Because I actually forgot this was a pre movie episode. I mean, this is one episode where Mr. Krabs is at his absolute worst. Now, you all know Mr. Krabs is a cheap bastard, and he'll go to some pretty sick, twisted lengths to get his claws on any kind of cash. And that includes scamming little children. This episode is about Mr. Krabs making a horribly unstable park in order to get money from little kids that are now on summer break. But he tricks SpongeBob into thinking he's trying to make the little children happy and promises to entertain them with a clown 
If they sign a couple of waivers, God, you're a fucking bastard! I forgot to give you these coloring book slash liability waivers! Everyone who hands theirs back gets to meet the one and only Krabby the Clown! Well, Mr. Krabs makes Spongebob pretend to be the clown's assistant, and when Spongebob finds out that the kids enjoy seeing him in pain, he starts deliberately injuring himself for their amusement. Which, of course, Mr. Krabs has absolutely no care in the world about. What happened to your arms and legs, boy? The kids are using them as boomerangs. Boomerangs? Oh no! They might break my windows! Then Mr. Krabs finally tells the kids that Krabby the Clown is here, and then he does this. Thank you! Eat plenty of Krabby Patties! <laughs> oh, just the look on their faces is heartbreaking. Spongebob calls Mr. Krabs out for being a cheap old asshole, and Mr. Krabs basically says, Yeah, I'm cheap, so what? Fuck the kids, I only care about money. And then the kids confront him. Yes, please! I want to see these kids beat the shit out of this bastard, you fucking assholes! You couldn't even show that? And it turns out Mr. Krabs' punishment is being forced to eat lima beans. Let me go! I gotta get some of that green stuff! No! Not that green stuff! That's one of the weakest punishments I've ever seen for someone who's done something so ungodly cruel. Now I get this episode is trying to make Krabs unlikable, so you feel satisfied when he gets punished at the end. But his punishment is so light and basically off screen that it's not even remotely satisfying. Yeah, I'm glad the kids got their cash back, but all in all, this episode is boring, it's cruel, and it just shows how horrible of a character Krabs has always been. It's actually remarkable that they've made him even more unlikable since this episode. I don't care about the children. I just care about their parents' money. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Now before I reveal number one, I just want to name a few honorable mentions. I was a teenage Gary. This episode has a pretty bad start, with Squidward being left in charge of Gary, and instead letting Gary come close to dying from malnutrition. But aside from that, I find it kind of entertaining after that pretty cruel intro. I will admit there are some really gross imageries, but I've already said that I've seen so much worse than this at this point. This episode also feels like an homage to some monster movies, like Jekyll and Hyde and The Wolfman. And if it's an homage, it doesn't do too bad of a job in my opinion. Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost This episode is just really kind of bland. It's about Spongebob and Patrick thinking they killed Squidward and thinking he's a ghost. So Squidward takes advantage of it, but because Spongebob and Patrick are morons, they end up getting most of what Squidward wants wrong and end up sending him to... the great gig in the sky, so to speak. He's on the other side now. Yeah, he's in a better place. So, not really bad, just not really anything special. Alright, enough of this. Let's get to the number one episode on this list. Number one. Dumped. Oh god, this episode is memorable for all the wrong reasons. In this episode, Gary leaves Spongebob to go be Patrick's pet. And, oh god, Patrick is such a jackass in this episode. He basically rubs Spongebob's face in the fact that Gary is now his pet, and poor Spongebob is so miserable throughout this episode. It's just so depressing. I mean, no, forget that it's depressing, and mean-spirited, and shows off how horrible Patrick could be. It's also incredibly boring and unengaging. Like, what can you really come back to from this episode? Now, before you say that this episode is similar to Have You Seen This Snail in Levels of Depressing, let me stop you right now and tell you why Have You Seen This Snail is infinitely more better and more well done than Dumped is. In Have You Seen This Snail, Spongebob actually does something to drive Gary away. In Dumped, Gary just up and leaves Spongebob for Patrick, and Patrick is so smug and cruel about it, while in Have You Seen This Snail, Patrick isn't anywhere near as unlikable, and he tries to help Spongebob get Gary back. Also in Have You Seen This Snail, you feel bad for Spongebob because you know he didn't intend to drive Gary away, and he feels incredibly guilty for having done so. 
and dumped, SpongeBob did nothing to warrant his misery, and that makes it even harder to be okay with it. I mean, I get that they're trying to simulate how painful a breakup can be, but that's not something any kid show should really be trying. I mean, this isn't like a friendship ending. This is someone abandoning you for your best friend, and there's nothing funny or entertaining about it. I mean, it's definitely heart-wrenching, but for all the wrong reasons. Do you want fresh scent or heavy to... Here it comes. To... 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 <laughs> the scenes where SpongeBob tries to find a new pet? I mean, I guess those are very hit or miss. You can probably find humor out of that. But for me, it's a miss. It just adds to SpongeBob's already undeserved misery, and it only makes me want to deck Patrick even more than I already wanted to. So long, SpongeBob. Gary and me got stuff to do. It's what Gary wants, and what Gary wants is me. The only thing you can really enjoy about this episode is maybe the ending. But again, like most of these episodes, the ending is not good enough to make up for everything this episode does. Hell, the reason Gary left SpongeBob for Patrick was because he wanted a cookie in Patrick's pocket. And just, I thought that was kind of weak and unsatisfying. Even Patrick crying at the end isn't satisfying because he's so dislikable that I just want to see SpongeBob run back in, kick him in the nuts, and tell him, DON'T EVER SHOW YOUR FUCKING FACE IN THIS HOUSE AGAIN! And that would actually probably make the episode better. But since they very clearly can't do that, there was just no way to save this episode. It was a straight up DOA for me and, I've said it before, FUCK PATRICK STAR. I THOUGHT WHAT WE HAD WAS SPECIAL! It wasn't! Now go away! But I'll say this again as well. I love pre-movie Spongebob. I think it's a straight-up classic series, and I think it's absolutely filled with episodes worth re-watching. Yeah, some episodes aren't going to be as good as others, but what do you expect? Every show has an off episode. Just like every person has an off day. It'll happen. But luckily, the best shows out there will be remembered for the things they did right. And in my opinion, very few shows did more right than pre-movie Spongebob. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for joining me for Cynical Top 5s. And thanks for all your support. I love each and every one of you. And I'm really glad to do this for you guys. And I'll see you in the next review.